welcome to Hogfire, a program of news and current events from a libertarian perspective. Tonight, your host is Joseph Dobrian, Libertarian Party candidate for mayor of New York City, and guests Peter Nichols, Libertarian Party candidate for Huntington Town Supervisor, and William Matthew Grove, Republican Conservative candidate for the Suffolk County Legislature in the 16th Legislative District. And now here's your host, Joseph Dobrian. Now, um, Peter, I'm going to start with you. You are the Libertarian candidate for Huntington Town Supervisor. And um, a lot of people are still not quite sure what the Libertarian Party is and what we stand for. Could you tell us briefly what, what Libertarianism is all about? Well, basically, Libertarianism stands for individualism, stands for individuality, um, also stands for free markets. Um, it also stands for limited government. So applying these three basic principles to decisions in government is what you would have when you have a libertarian candidate like myself running for office. Okay, and in practical terms, what would it look like if you were uh, elected to the um, post of Huntington Town Supervisor? What changes would you be able to effect that would be particularly libertarian? Well. As a uh, candidate for Huntington Town Supervisor, I think the, the most important thing that I would do would be to protect the rights of the individual from encroachment by the government. Uh, I'll give you a typical example. Um, the number one problem that people have come to me when I was getting signatures uh, to get on the ballot uh, was property taxes. They felt taxes were too high. They felt that they were excessive. And the reason why taxes are too high and excessive is because of excessive spending. And I think as a libertarian in office, my priority would be to bring government back to what it was supposed to be doing as dictated in the Constitution or Declaration of Independence, which is to protect the right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, I think that the town government as it exists today in the town of Huntington, which is controlled by the Democrat Party 5-0, is basically a sort of closed club. And what they've done in the past is, is that there's been a lot of decisions that have been made behind closed doors. There's been a lot of decisions that have spent the taxpayers' money in order to promote social programs in order to get reelected. And as town supervisor, the, the first thing that I would do would be to enact term limits two terms, eight years, and you're out. Currently, the supervisor now is, has been in there 16 years, and he's going for our fifth term, which will be 20 years. Okay. Now, uh, Matt Groh, you are the Republican and conservative candidate for uh, Suffolk County Legislature from the 16th District. Can you tell me, first of all, why you are running for this office? Thank you, Joseph. I'm running for this office because I have a tremendous amount of faith, and I'm very persistent. I made this run two years ago, and I have a lot of faith that um, it's the time for an individual to get into the office that will provide checks and balances and be a voice of reason. We have one party control at all levels of government. Peter mentioned the town of Huntington Town Board. We also have one party control Suffolk County Legislature, Suffolk County Executive. We also have one party control at the state level and at the federal level as well. And I would love to address all the problems at each of the levels, but that would take up the next few hours and uh, so I intend to focus on problems at the county level and those problems include just as one example 1500 empty positions they're vacant but they're included in the tax roll they're included in our tax assessment every year it's actually 1631 as of July 26th we are paying for those positions and we're not getting the services that we're paying for my opponent and his colleagues call it turnover savings I call it fraud. We're paying for something that we're not getting the benefit of, Joseph. So I want to take those positions out of the budget and budget and balance it properly or put some of those people in the positions that we've been promised and we haven't gotten to provide the services that we In other we words, need. you're telling me that um, the uh, county's tax dollars are going to pay for positions that don't exist? That's correct. There are, they are vacant positions. They are in the budget, but no person is in that position. Who is responsible for this, and why doesn't anybody complain? We are complaining, and that's why I'm running again. 
the uh, problem is one party control. The Suffolk County Legislature is controlled by the Democrats, the executive is a Democrat, and my opponent and Lou DeMauro and John Cooper and Wayne Horsley, what I call the group of true believers, the people who follow whatever far, far too many times, they follow whatever the county executive wants them to do, good or bad, and uh, they've put up with this practice where the county charter requires the county executive to sign off on every hiring. The funding is there for these people, supposedly, and the county executive does not sign off on the hiring. The stack of papers has grown to 1,631 positions, and my opponent and his colleagues don't force the issue. They promised us 10 probation officers to oversee sex offenders two years ago. They were never hired. That's outrageous. They promised um, a supervisor to do the same thing, and that person was never hired. Those 11 positions are part of the 1631. We're short 365 police officers. I'm going to see that we get these people hired to the extent that we need to and that we reverse this trend of balancing the budget by cheating the taxpayers. Okay, thank you very much. Now, um, Peter, maybe you can tell me a little bit about um, what it's possible to do as town supervisor if you are a libertarian and you are trying to instill libertarian <coughs> principles in the local government, but you're, sti you're still so much under the um, the uh, the rule, I should say, of the federal government and the state government. You really have very little power. How much can you do? Well, the supervisor of the town is in charge of the budget. Uh -huh. And that is where most people feel that there is a problem. Um, I feel at this point in time, the number one problem, and I go back to the, the, the principle that really everything flows uh, from this principle that I believe in, and that's the protection of individuals' rights, and that includes economic rights from excessive taxation. I'll give you a perfect example. In the town of Huntington, there is an affordable housing program, which basically certain people are allowed to get brand new homes or economic assistance from the town. Other people are excluded. This is a violation of my economic rights because it is taking money that I earned, my tax dollars, and giving it to someone else and this is done arbitrarily by people in government. The, the second problem that I see, um, in addition to being a budgetary problem, is transparency. There is a lot of information that the public does not know because of an archaic system of basically concealing it. If you go down to town hall today, and we were talking about this before, I, I asked for a list of town employees and how much money they make and what type of benefits they receive. I was not given that list. I was told to, that I had to file a freedom of information request. When I did that, I was given a copy of the budget and a stack of papers about this high and told uh, it's 25 cents a copy. <laughs> this is typical of what happens when the town board takes it upon itself to basically enact rules ad hoc and keep the average citizen from knowing what's going on. Okay. And as town supervisor, transparency would definitely be at the top of my list. All right, now uh, Matt, do we have a uh, similar transparency problem in the Suffolk County Legislature? Well, we have the 1,631 positions, yes. We also have a problem with uh, a false claim that they're not raising taxes, that they're holding the line on taxes, and they claim that they're doing that in the general fund. But what they do is they raise taxes and they put taxes on our tax bills in other ways and they're regressive taxes. They're the type of taxes that hurt the lower income earner more than the, the higher income earner. For instance, we have the um, energy tax. Suffolk County has a tax on home heating, fuel, natural gas, and electricity. It was 1%, it was supposed to be phased out. Instead of phasing it out, my opponent and his colleagues have doubled the tax, and it's a hidden tax. People don't see it on their bills. The LIPA tax is another tax. Um, they used to call it a fuel surcharge, now they call it a su power, sur uh, power supply charge because the fuel prices came down. That's another transparency issue. Uh, they just implemented a cell phone tax, they're taxing motels and hotels, which isn't good for the economy. It's a tax, tax, tax administration, and then they deceive us by telling us they're not raising our taxes when in fact we have all these hidden fees. Okay, but now the, um, the um, standard argument uh, in favor of taxation is you have to have taxes in order to run the government, run infrastructure, so on. Um, if you were elected, 
where would the cuts come so that we could cut taxes? Well, let's talk about my own position. There's 18 Suffolk County legislators. They're $89,000 a year for a part-time position. I say make it full-time, ban all outside work, or cut the pay in half. Each of the 18 have three full-time legislative aides. That's too much government. That's too much spending. We can save over a million dollars there. We need to also have the other elected officials address their salaries. The elected officials asked all of the union people to take a 10-day furlough. They're willing to accept maybe a furlough too. We'll see if that actually comes to pass, but they need to reduce their salaries. Americans are hurting. We are taking cuts in pay. We are backing off on spending and we are trying to stay afloat, so to speak, and our elected officials act as if they're immune from what's going on in the economy. We all need to take cuts, and we all need to accept responsibility when we're wrong. Okay. Now, uh, Peter, where would your cuts come? I assume you would have to uh, cut down the government considerably in order to justify cutting the uh, budget. Well, there, there's a lot of things you can do, and, and when you look at the, the budget itself, it, it's very um, complex, it's very archaic, and not having been in the government for the last 16 years. There's a lot of special coding that goes on with uh, you know, line items in the budget. The first thing that really needs to be done is to have an audit from an outside firm. Go in there, find out exactly which jobs are patronage, which departments no longer are needed. Um, we need to find out how much interest we're paying on bonds. The, the current supervisor uh, makes a uh, big seen over that the, the town has a double uh, A AA or a triple A bond rating, as if this was some sort of magical accomplishment that was only uh, brought about by his hard working skills. What he doesn't uh, explain is, is that we got that triple A or double A bond rating by raising taxes and by paying for extra insurance in order to get that double A or triple A rating. If you go back to 1994, his first full year in office, until 2009, spending has increased over $50 million per year. Our budget was around $130 million when he first came in office. Now it's, it's almost $200 million. Okay. And there's a lot of extra budget items that are not included. To blindly go in and say, I'm going to cut here, here, and here, I would not do that because to me that would be irresponsible. You need to go in, you need to do an audit, you need to find out where money is being wasted, where the patronage positions are, and you need to cut those people out. That's plain and simple. That's how a libertarian would handle it. Limited government. Okay, speaking of libertarian, do you have problems with that label when people hear that you're a libertarian? Do they, do they shrink away from you or hold up a cross or something like that? No. And if so, how do you deal with it? It, it, you know, it depends. You know, I was standing out in, in parking lots and, and speaking to people and, you know, they hear libertarian, they hear the word liberty and I really haven't had anybody say, oh, you know, you guys are into killing squirrels or something like that. But I, I think... Well, you're lucky. I get a lot of that <laughs> in New York City. <laughs> well, I don't know what part of the city you live in, but uh, I, I think once people understand that you are for limited government, they sort of identify with you. And when they find out that I've been endorsed also by the conservative party, that sort of reinforces uh, that. Okay. Now, Matt, do you, um, do you get any kickback when people hear that you're a uh, conservative? Do they, uh, do they look for horns or uh, cloven hooves or anything like that? Uh, quite the opposite, Joseph. We've had a great reception this year. We're going door to door. The uh, most effective way to uh, get votes is personal contact and the reception this year has been outstanding. Uh, people are ready to reverse the tide to reduce the number, the amount of spending, reduce overregulation, and reduce taxes. And they want a candidate that's willing to take it on and do it. And that's me. Um, another thing that we're seeing is that people don't mind when I talk about being a man of faith and my conservative viewpoints. Um, people are finding that to be very refreshing. I'm a, a libertarian in a lot of ways, a, a constitutionalist in a lot of ways. I believe that our forefathers created the greatest uh, nation in the history of mankind through limited government and free enterprise and capitalism and the ability to practice one's faith or no faith whatsoever, whatever somebody wants to do. Um, okay, I, now you bring up your religious faith. How would that translate into the way you would perform as a Suffolk County legislator? Well, I, I believe a man of faith is going to be a good moral, ethical leader 
and uh, that my faith will help carry me through tough times as well as uh, good times. When a tough time comes, I'm reminded of a certain uh, saying, uh, keep a steel, a steel spine, hold your head high, smile, hold it up to God and boogie on. Okay, very good. Now, um, Peter, as um, Huntington Town Supervisor, you uh, have a great deal of control over money and a lot of money generally goes to uh, public education. Um, would you be, um, would you oversee any of that money? And if so, would you have any, any influence over the way public education is administered in, uh, Suffolk, in, in Huntington? Well, the, the town uh, supervisor really doesn't control any of that. It's more of a state issue. Um, but I think on a state level, I think we can see the results of government sponsored schools. You, you see a lot of uh, excessive spending. You see a lot of uh, patronage positions. Um, you don't see the results that you would get if you had a privatized system. And, and just to follow up on what Matt was uh, speaking about faith, I think that it's important that everybody understand that uh, libertarians believe in a complete separation of politics and economics and church and state. And, and my faith and my beliefs are my personal beliefs and they will not in any way be brought about during any particular public office event or any type of decision at all. Okay, very good. Now, um, Matt, the um, Suffolk County uh, traditionally was Republican, heavily Republican for a very long time. Right. And now it has, over the past few decades, gradually shifted and become more more left liberal Democrat. Why is that? And what are you going to do about it? There's two reasons. It's a lack of responsiveness to the community, which I plan to address. I'm, I'm trying to bring my party back to the people, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, that's important. There's a big change in demographics. We are changing as a community, and I welcome and support um, those changes. I'm a labor and employment attorney. I practice uh, labor and employment law, so I'm well aware of uh, discrimination, harassment, and all, force, uh, all sources uh, of un, all forms of unlawful and uh, unfair conduct, and I'm very sensitive to those issues. And uh, our county executive has not been as sensitive as he needs to be to uh, say the Hispanic community. I plan to bridge some gaps there. Okay, in what way specifically has he been insensitive to the Hispanic community, and how would you be more sensitive to it? Well, first of all, there's always a number of uh, unfortunate statements that are made that become public and uh, are publicized, which uh, certainly shouldn't be the case. No one should be saying, you know, the unfortunate things that our county executive has been known to say on a few occasions. Um, I do agree with uh, leveling the playing field for employers that all employers should be required to be on the up and up regarding the law. But it appears that the county executive has gone after and targeted uh, Hispanics in particular um, on too many occasions. Um, and there should be a separation of powers too. The federal government already has in, law, in place laws to take care of certain immigration issues and the like. And the county executive has gone too far, in my opinion, overstepping the boundaries between the federal government and the state and trying to create um, many, many uh, county laws to enforce a problem that, or a situation that really should be in the hands of the federal government. Okay. Now. Um Peter, I've got a question for you about uh, how you explain yourself to other libertarians. Um, at least I've found when I run for office as a libertarian that a lot of really hardcore libertarians are asking me, why can't you priv promise to privatize schools all at once? Or why can't you promise to eliminate taxation all at once? Or, or why can't you um, promise to privatize infrastructure? And I say, well, it's just not practicable and they are not taking that for an answer. How do you deal with that? Well, I think you have to understand that there are certain things that the government is supposed to do. The, the government is, is supposed to protect people from force and fraud. It's supposed to provide military protection, police protection, it's supposed to provide courts for disputes. It's not supposed to provide housing for people that need it. It's not supposed to go out there and buy open space and open fields. It's not supposed to get involved in the economy to where it distorts a natural order of things. Um, I think we've seen over the last several years, and especially with the Obama administration, we've seen that there are people at the top who have 
use the government as a tool to get what they want. And there are people at the bottom who have used it to get what they want. And in the middle is everybody else who ends up footing the bill. And we see this with the health care bill right now. That is on a national level, but it's the same principle that government itself is not supposed to be doing that. And we can see the results where Medicare is broke, Medicaid is broke, Social Security is broke, um, school districts are spending outrageously. There's only so much money that people can pay in taxes. And I think at some point in time, something has to give. And you saw back in the 70s, Proposition 13 in California, people just couldn't take it anymore. We are getting to that breaking point where the people on the top and the people on the bottom are squeezing the people in the middle. And I think libertarians are in a very good position right now that if they can put together a very cohesive, coherent strategy to sort of dismantle this Leviathan state that we've created, but we would have to do it very slowly and very carefully because there are very long-term unseen consequences for everything that we do. So I think that would be a priority, sort of dismantling this giant inefficient state. That's what I keep telling my constituents, that we've dug ourselves a deep hole and mm -hmm. we can't simply fly out of it. We are going to have to climb out right. very, very slowly. Now, um, Matt, in your position as, well, we hope you're elected uh, to the Suffolk County Legislature, in your position as a legislator, are there specific rules, laws, regulations that you would like to get rid of? We definitely need to cut back on the amount of regulation that takes place that makes it very difficult for small business to operate. Small businesses are having the life choked out of them. They spend more time, the owners of the businesses that I represent spend far too much try, time trying to comply with the law rather than trying to make money. And small business in Suffolk County employs about 70 percent of the workforce. So we need to cut back on the regulations. The list is incredibly long. Um, that's something on my website, Joseph, and uh, we definitely need to address that. The overregulation is killing us. As an example, the state government just passed a law that has a requirement that every employee is going to have to sign off on an authorization to um, verify what their wages are. It's just another piece of paper that goes in the personnel file that's going to take a lot of effort for a lot of employers. Um, it, the uh, government has been insensitive to small business and the need to concentrate on making money and not complying with the law constantly when it's not necessary. Okay, and uh, Peter, pretty much the same question. Are there regulations that you can, on, on your own authority, repeal or ignore? And if not, how could you, in, through your office as town supervisor, make Huntington more business friendly? Well, there, there's a, the, the main reason why the economy in general, whether it's on a national level, state level, or even a local level, starts to decline. And, it, and it's usually because there are certain economic factors of, of over, overproduction, where the economy expands too fast and it, it starts to contract to reach that equilibrium. I think as far as Huntington goes on a local basis, what we have seen is basically a destruction of the capital, of the wealth in the town of Huntington. Uh -huh. and. The way that's happening is because of excessive taxation. Whether it's a new business or a homeowner, taking that money out of the economy, taking it out of circulation, and putting it in a very inefficient body, such as the government, destroys an economy. You, you'll find that where the economies are weakest are in areas where taxation is the highest. That is, that is the big difference that I will make. I will go in and I will do a complete inventory on the rules and regulations that we have, all the zoning amendments or all the positive and negative declarations for zoning that have been passed in the last 16 years, I will go through each one of them and find out which ones are hurting the homeowners themselves, which ones are hurting businesses. But I think at this time to make a, a blanket statement that I'm going to cut here and here without actually going in there and seeing what's going on, I, I think is uh, foolish at this point. Okay. Now, Matt, are you in a position as a uh, county legislator to... Um, maybe reprivatize some of the, uh, the real estate that, uh, that the county has taken over in, in past decades? Well, I suppose we could try. You're going to get a, a, a real battle from the environmentalists. There's, I was against the uh, bond that was passed two years ago to provide for all this additional funding to purchase land. Um, in other words, we're borrowing money to purchase land when we were already purchasing at a very high rate mm -hmm. prior to floating this bond. 
uh, unfortunately, the bond went through. It was a resolution, it was on the ballot, and it went through. So now we have all of this money, we have all of this land that's being bought. We do need to preserve um, a certain amount of land. We need to find a balance between that and, uh, and permitting business and capitalism to operate. Um, unfortunately, in my district, we have a huge problem with the lack of planning and uh, very inefficient uh, road system. Okay. And uh, so we have to be um, sensitive. For instance, uh, uh, Mr. Wolkoff wants to build uh, essentially a miniature city on the old Pilgrim State property. Uh -huh. The um, county missed the opportunity to purchase that land years ago. Okay. So nobody's going to stop Mr. Wolkoff. So right. now we need to work with him and use his okay. money to improve the infrastructure. All right, I see. Now, um, we're about to wrap up here, so I want to ask each of you really quickly. You've both given me your own ideas of what the important issues are. But what is the biggest issue that you hear when people come up to you and say, what are you going to do about this, that, or the other? I'll start with you, Peter. What, what's the first thing that people ask you about? Well, uh, we discussed before about excessive taxation. That, that is the number one issue, and that comes about because of excessive spending. And the excessive spending comes about because of the philosophy of the current town board, of the government itself, that they are the solution to every problem and that they can solve these problems by creating this program, that program, when they should be just letting the people keep the money. That will create more jobs than any stimulus package or any other tax scheme that, that they conjure up. I agree, absolutely. And Matt, same question to you. When, when you pe tell people that you're running for uh, county legislator and they say, what are you going to do for us, what do you say? Well, overspending is a big problem and they want me to cut back on the overspending. Mm -hmm. The taxing is a huge problem and they want to cut back on taxes. Mm -hmm. The uh, Obama health care bill has been coming up quite a bit even when I go to the door. That that's a federal issue, not a county issue, well, right? Joseph, I intend to run for higher office when after I serve my full-time term as a legislator. So what I say is I agree with you. I had a gentleman tell me he's been fighting cancer for 10 years and he doesn't mind going home to his maker as long as he's able to give it his best fight before he goes and he is scared to death that he will not be able to give it that fight. And this bill has language in it to raise legitimate concerns about that. Yeah, I believe that's a concern that uh, is shared by a great many people. And uh, on that note, we're going to have to wrap up. But I want to thank you both very much for coming on the show tonight. Peter Nichols for um, Huntington Town Supervisor and Matt Grow for co County Legislator from the 16th District. Thank you both. And thank you for tuning in. Join us next week for another edition of Hardfire. <laughs>